Hello there, Totemites, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to be talking about DC and their failure to listen. So, Suicide Squad came out the other day, and while I haven't seen it myself quite yet, by the time you see this video, I likely will have, the reviews are saying that it's not pretty. The movie has to make $750 million to break even. Some speculate that that number is as high as $800 million. But why has the Suicide Squad movie flopped? Well, let's take a look back at Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman first of all. What we've actually experienced with these movies is a downward trend. Man of Steel was the most well-reviewed movie of the three. Batman vs Superman slipped a little bit, and now Suicide Squad has been a suicide fall into the canyon of absolute destruction. Last I looked, Rotten Tomatoes had Suicide Squad at about 32%, and while that number is obviously going to change over the next few days and likely has changed already, that is not good. Wonder Woman was actually the best part of Batman vs Superman, and many are hoping that that movie will turn things around. However, many had that hope for Suicide Squad as well, and I'm not dubbing Wonder Woman a failure before it's ever even come out, but we have to worry at this point, don't we? What really sparked my geek rage over this has been the insolence coming from DC's executives, their directors, and the people who made Suicide Squad, specifically David Ayer, who at Comic-Con this year said, Fuck Marvel! Really? Really? Fuck Marvel. The people who are doing absolutely everything better than you, you're just gonna insult them. You have the argument of a five-year-old, Mr. Ayers. Let's get over it. Luckily, Stan Lee has a much more temperamental approach to this situation than I do. Why is F.U. considered an insult? It's the most exotic, exquisite experience you can have. <laughs> At any rate, we know that there's some underlying feelings of anger towards Marvel from DC and vice versa. David Ayers then went on Twitter though and said, thank you Stan, you're one of my heroes growing up, blah 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 blah, basically industry politics, right? But I think this speaks to a bigger problem. This is a situation in which you've struck out not once, twice, but three times now. And I know David Ayers didn't direct all three of these movies, Zack Snyder was involved in uh, the others. But we have to talk about the idea that DC is not giving good direction to these directors. The only good thing to come out of the DC universe so far, I think that's been better than previous DC movies, has been Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Those two characters look to be phenomenal. And while we only got a taste of Wonder Woman and we only got a morsel of Aquaman in the Justice League trailer, there are other aspects of this that are not looking so hot. The Flash's outfit looks terrible. Ben Affleck's suit still doesn't look that great. In the trailer, he does this squatting thing that just looks flaccid. The other portion of this argument that is very saddening is the notion that DC thinks that they can somehow catch up to Marvel this quickly. I think that in the long run, DC can certainly, with their huge roster of characters, introduce some form of competition and rivalry to Marvel, but not yet. Marvel's been at this since 2008 with Iron Man. I think, in fact, The Incredible Hulk actually began the universe, but everyone likes to look to Iron Man as sort of the tipping point. You have to take time to make these characters feel. You have to take time to make these characters look and sound more like the normal and average everyday person. Stan Lee has said that's what makes characters great, the ability for someone to feel like, in the case of Spider-Man, that anyone could be under that mask. You could be under Spider-Man's mask, and that's something that's beautiful about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All of the characters seem like that in some form or fashion. There's people out there that can relate to Thor, there's people out there that can relate to Peter Parker. DC doesn't have any characters so far that I feel like I can relate to. So I want to know your opinion. What's the fix here? How does DC write the course of this very forsaken ship? Go to the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this video and the DC Cinematic Universe. Let's have a conversation about it because these videos aren't any fun unless you do. This is Jacob Saylor for Chosen Totem, signing off.